This is the lecture for intro 4A. So what we'll be discussing in this is online lectures and the importance of taking good notes for this chemistry course. So you will want to take notes while you are watching this lecture because if you look on your grid that is part of your assessment. Okay, so why why take notes? Well, one main thing is vocabulary. So we'll be looking at vocabulary as we do each unit. Vocabulary that you're required to know and that will help you further understand the information. So in the different notes that you will see throughout the grid and throughout the unit, we'll kind of dive a little bit deeper into that vocabulary and give you a deeper understanding of it rather than just simply a definition. The online lecture will also give you an idea of essential ideas and topics. So it's kind of an introduction to what you are expected to learn. If there are problems, so maybe you're solving a dimensional analysis problem or we are looking at balancing balancing an equation anytime there is something that you have to solve i'm going to go step by step how to solve that and also give examples so things that you can refer to if you are stuck if you need a refresher so there will be examples that are worked through and it also serves as a resource for you as you study. So some tips for when you are taking notes. You always want to either use your notebook or your loose leaf paper, whatever you are going to use every time. You want to make sure that is all in one central space. So make sure that you always are aware of where your notes are and where you are going to put them. One thing that just kind of helps us stay organized is starting each new lecture on a new page, just so you're not trying to dig through what every different part is. You're not trying to go through one page and then looking at another and having to try to figure out which lecture it is you're really trying to find. It also helps to write the date. So if you know, hey, I looked at this last Wednesday, that's when I watched the lecture, it's really easy for you to find that. And then you also want to write your learning target at the beginning. So remember that your learning target will be matched up with the levels of your grid. So you should always have that grid available. It will also be posted on Google Classroom for you. So make sure that you are looking at and recognizing what learning target the lecture will be going over. So how will I take notes in chemistry? So in this course, your notes for the majority of the time will be taken from online lectures. So what I will present to you through an online lecture is the exact same information that I would present to you if I were standing in front of you in the classroom. It's just in a different format. The information and what I say and the problems that I work are the exact same. You will find your lectures posted in Google Classroom and it will give you a link and sometimes you will hear, hear this method called a flipped classroom. So we'll talk about this in a second, but if you need to pause at any point, feel free to pause the lecture so you can get things written down before moving on. So a flipped classroom, what does that actually mean? So the majority of us, myself included in our education, have most of the time been in a traditional classroom. So what this looks like is the teacher will lecture, present information in class. So in your 40 minute or 80 minute period, the teacher is doing slides, maybe they're pra doing practice problems on the board, and then it is up to the student to take the practice problems, generally, maybe homework problems from the book or a worksheet, and to take that home and practice on their own time. So in a flipped classroom, where those different things happen is flipped. So what's ideal is if you can 
watch lectures at home whenever you get the chance or during study hall. And then you can work on the practice problems in class when I am available to help you. So I know all of us have been through this. One situation I think a lot happens, we'll just use math as an example. You're looking through your problems, Mr. Hirschberger, Ms. Thomas, Mr. Brown, whoever is your math teacher is working through these problems and you're taking notes and you're like, I got this, I understand this. And then they assign one through 30 odd for the evening. And you get home and you open up your geometry, your algebra two book, or maybe even your pre-calc book. And you're like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Wouldn't it be nice if your teacher was sitting right there or was only 10 feet away that you could ask the question and maybe get some help starting your problem? So that's kind of the benefit of the flipped classroom is your teacher is there to help you through the problems. So I hear this a lot. I need to be face-to-face -face in a lecture. I need the teacher standing in front of me telling me this information. I hear it all the time. But let's talk about this. When you're in a lecture and your teacher's lecturing for 40 minutes, 35 of the 40 minutes sometimes, how much are you really paying attention? Even if you're trying to pay attention to every single word. All of us are likely to kind of drift off here and there. So what are you really getting out of it? Are you just writing down everything that's on the board and then just moving on? Another thing is how much class time is used. So within that 40 minute period, <clears throat> how much time is actually going towards getting you information? So think, someone asks, a question that the teacher already answered. You're waiting for someone to finish what is on the slide. Maybe there's problems with the projector. You might spend 15 to 20 minutes in all reality actually getting notes and lectures, which is another thing. Any lectures that I do, I try and keep them between 15 to 20 minutes in length because that's about as much information as we want to absorb at a time. We like to chunk it into small pieces. Here's another thing. What happens when you're absent? Usually the teacher says, get the notes from someone, right? Or maybe they're posted on Google Classroom or they're posted on Moodle, but you're not getting the interaction of watching a problem get done. You're not getting the interaction of hearing what is being said, not just the words on the page. Are you just writing things down because they're on the board? Most of the time, we'll understand what we're doing, but there's going to be times where you're going to see stuff and you just write it down because it's there. And can you take your time and really take in the information and can you re-listen? So a lot of us don't want to ask the teacher to repeat things. But if you're watching a lecture with me and you're watching my recording and you think, what did she just say? You can pause it and rewind. So that's another benefit that you have. So I understand that it's different, but I encourage you to go into it with an open mind because many of you have not been exposed to this before. So you don't know that it doesn't work for you. Okay, you'll be surprised as to how much you can get out of a lecture that you can pause and rewind and then how much time you actually get to spend working on problems with me actually there. So I already kind of hit on these. Some other benefits of online lectures, it's available to you at any time. So if you miss class one day because you had a dentist appointment, you can go home and watch that lecture. It's available to you anywhere that you have internet and at any time once it has been posted. You can also work at your own pace. So like I said before, if you need to watch a problem get done twice, watch it twice. If you need to hear something again or if you want to listen or watch something happen again, you can pause it. Go back. So you can work at the pace that you need to. You're also not rushed 
to write things down before the teacher changes the slide because you always have the luxury of that pause button. And then you can also repeat as needed. All right, so just some general tips on when you should watch lectures and kind of some, some pointers here. So those of you that use your phone for most of your internet, if you can avoid it, I would suggest trying to avoid watching it on your phone. I understand sometimes that's, that's what you have at home and that's where you can access the internet, so that's your option. But if you have another option, I would suggest you use something else. We all know how distracting our phones can be, so I encourage you to try and put those distractions away. Also, try and find a quiet place to work where no one's going to interrupt you or you'll have minimal interruptions. So somewhere that you can focus. You know where that place is best for you. So just try and get yourself there. Once again, on the phones, try and put it away if you're watching it at home. If you're in class watching it, it will be in the box so it won't be a worry. And then if you're working on a computer and you have multiple tabs open, don't have something open that you're going to be tempted to click on and look at and browse while listening to the lecture. You want your one and only focus to be on the lecture at that time. Do not connect to social media while watching your video. Don't really need to say too much more about that. We understand why that is. Make sure that you have your notebook so you can take notes. The point of watching the lecture is to understand, but it's also to take notes so you can reference. So make sure that you aren't just watching the lecture just to watch the lecture. This is kind of a preference thing. If you have the ability to watch it without headphones and you're not going to be distracted, if you're in a quiet room, you don't need headphones. But if there's other distractions around or there's people talking or other things going on and you think that those headphones would help you, then go ahead and use them. Now, when you are actually ready to take notes. You found yourself a quiet place. You're on the computer at home and your phone's out of the way. No one's home to distract you. Let's talk about the act of actually taking the notes. So there will be things that are written on the screen, bullet points, but you're also going to hear a lot of stuff. So don't just simply write down what is on the screen but listen to what is being said. So if you need to hear it one or two more times, like I said, pause it, write it down, pause it, re-listen. So I am not going to put every single word on the slide. I know that you can read. I'm not gonna read the slides to you. So write down what is written as well as what is said. If there are diagrams and charts that I put in there, there's a reason for that. Make sure that you are drawing them and putting them in your notes. I do not put them in the, in the lectures just to put them in there, okay? So if I'm drawing on a data table or I'm drawing on a graph, put those things in your notes as a reference. I've, hit, I've talked about this multiple times, so you don't, we don't really need to go over that again. If you don't understand, feel free to re rewind. And I also encourage you to write down the times of things that you don't understand. Because then the two of us can quickly access that the next day in class. And we can look at that video and we can pull up the exact moment that you were confused. And we can talk through it together. Now, if I say pause the video and solve this problem or pause the video and write this down, please do it. It gives you a way to self-assess and see, do I understand what's going on? Where 
did I do well? Where did I struggle? So if I tell you to pause the video, please pause the video and make an attempt. If you don't fully get it, that's okay. But I need for you to try. So if I ask questions, sometimes I'll post questions at the beginning, sometimes I'll post questions through the middle, at the end it all depends on what the lecture is and what we're trying to get out of it. But try to answer them. Take a minute, think about it, reference old things in your notes. Make an attempt as you go through the lecture because I promise it will help you in the end with your understanding. All right. You've watched the lecture, you're done, you took all your notes. This is huge, okay? Be okay with not understanding everything. What you need to remember is for many of these things, it will be the first time you've been exposed to this information. So it is okay if you don't think you understand it completely because that's what we are here for in class. For us to work through things together, you can work through it with a partner. It's okay if you do not understand it completely. If you have questions or concerns, write them down. And like I said before, it's very helpful if you can write down the time that it was in the video because then it allows us to kind of access that a little bit sooner. So we're not digging through that. Just browse through your notes, skim through them again. See if there were areas that maybe you're like, mm, I'm not really sure I got that part. Mark them somehow, put a star next to it. Dog tag your, the top of your paper so you know which page of your notes was a little bit confusing. And then try the assignment. So even if you feel like I just, Ugh, I'm not really sure about this. Give it a shot. It's okay. It's okay to try and not get it right the first time. It's okay to try and not get it right the second time. Okay, you'll hear me say this a lot. Failing, F-A-I-L, is your first attempt in learning. It's okay to not get it right the first time. That's why we are here to work through things together. So you might watch something and be like, you know what? I don't get it at all. So let's talk about this. First thing, relax. Take a breath. Like I said before, it's okay. You watched the lecture and you gave it what you got. Let's think about this. Were there distractions? Were you on your phone for a few minutes here and there? Was your little brother and sister running through the house and you had to make sure that they weren't fighting? Did you have distractions that didn't allow you to completely immerse yourself in the lecture? Did you write down questions? As you, as you had questions, were you writing them down somewhere? If not, that kind of will help. So it leads us into the direction of what, what started with the confusion. Which part of the lecture were you okay with? Which part was a little fuzzy? And then where... Did you completely get lost? So make sure you are writing down those questions as you go. Be prepared to ask things in class. Be prepared to ask specific things in class. And then you can also plan to attend study, study tables. So on Fridays during study hall, some of those second periods for you guys that have that lab period will be available to you. Um, we'll also have study tables after school, so we will go over when those times will be. So you will have time to be working on your grids in class, but you'll also have some time outside of class if you think you need a little bit more one-on-one -on -one attention. I don't have access to the internet. All right, so you can go to the library during your study hall. You can stay after school during study tables. You can go to the public library. Maybe you have a relative or friend that has Wi-Fi at their house they'll let you use. Or go somewhere with free Wi-Fi. A lot of places will have that available to you now. So once again, I'm just going to emphasize relax. This is a new thing for many of you. 
and it is a skill. Taking notes in general is a skill. And then taking notes from an online lecture, it's a little bit different than taking them in class. So it's something that we are going to work on and you want to get better. So I need for you to just give it a shot, okay? Go into it with an open mind, take these tips that I've given and go from there, okay? So I kinda went over my 20 minute limit there, but if you have questions, let me know. Once you have completed this lecture and you have taken notes on it, we'll chat a little bit and we'll sign you off on your grid.